Are you growing fresh food in your backyard? We think you should be. Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kyleen Jones, and we are the Provident Preppers. The ability to produce fruits and vegetables in your own backyard is a vital skill. Preppers understand how important this food supply is to their long-term storage. It's not quite as easy as putting rice and beans in a can, but it can be done, and it will be very rewarding for you and your family. In this video, we are going to discuss some important reasons why you need to grow a survival garden in your own backyard, and we'll give you some great tips and tricks in designing the perfect survival garden for you and your family. It's important to do this so that you can be prepared to feed your family during challenging times, as well as to improve the quality of food that you eat every day. Stay with us. We think every prepper should have a garden. In fact, we think everyone should have a garden, but especially if you are a prepper, a garden is essential. For a lot of additional information, we hope that you'll look at our post, Best Strategies for Growing a Reliable Survival Garden. The number one reason why we grow our garden is to produce everyday delicious nutrition so that we have better tasting, higher quality produce to feed our family. Consider some of these possible scenarios if you need some motivation for growing your survival garden. There's things like unemployment, also hyperinflation. We see this happening in various places throughout the world. The cost of goods is going through the roof and it could happen here. We hope it doesn't, but it could. Economic downturn, the economies go up and down. It's just a part of the natural cycles and we need to be prepared when things do turn down. One of the best ways to recession-proof your household is to grow your own food. Crop failures are another factor that we have to consider. In the Midwest this year, there's been a massive amount of flooding. Also the possibility of transportation crises, whether it's a trucker strike or fuel costs, whatever that may look like, if we can't get that food transported to our stores, we can't get it. Then there are other kinds of extreme events like long-term grid down events. This would create massive havoc in our society and may result in us not being able to get food, water, and other critical resources. And then just other reasons why there may be supply shortages, whether it's war, increased demand, whatever that is, if you can't get food for your family, you've got problems. There are two main gardens that we're gonna talk about. The first assumes that you have a long-term food storage where you have high calorie foods such as rice and beans, wheat and oats stored. And what you are wanting from this garden is to supplement the nutrition that those long-term staples are missing, such as vitamin A and vitamin C. The other type of garden is a standalone garden where the crops that you are producing will be your sole source of food. This, it's really important that you have calorie and nutrient dense foods because you don't have that food storage with those calories to fall back on. So you need to produce the crops like the potatoes and things that are very calorie dense. In this type of a garden, or if I was living solely upon what I could grow, chickens would be very important to supply the missing fats and protein. The reason why root crops are such an important part of a standalone survival garden is because they have such a long storage life. When you are depending on what you can grow to eat, things like potatoes and carrots and beets and parsnips will store all winter long. And that's really important. If you have a solid food storage program, why do you want to grow a garden? We're going to tell you why. The first reason is to provide missing nutrients. Your stored foods are fantastic. I highly encourage everyone to have food storage, but they are missing critical nutrients that you can only get from fresh foods. Growing your own garden can provide those nutrients for you so that your family stays healthy. Your survival garden will allow you to stretch your stored food supply and it will last much, much longer. One of the great benefits of a survival garden is that it can enhance the flavor of your stored foods. A lot of those basic staples like rice and beans are very bland, but once you add some good vegetables to them and some flavor enhancing spices, they can be amazing. One of the really cool things about your survival garden is it provides you with exercise, with sunshine and fresh air, 
and it also helps to reduce your stress levels. And it will also improve your overall health, which is an important component of surviving when life gets tough. There are a few challenges that you need to consider as you think about your survival garden. We'll talk about those now. Failure is not an option. When things are on the line and your family is hungry, you need to be able to produce. That means that when you select your crops, you only plant crops that are tried and true. Crops that you have physically grown in your own yard and have had great success with. The picture you see on the screen was our total harvest of potatoes one year. We had a real struggle. We were trying a new method that wasn't tried and true. We don't know exactly all the reasons, but we were trying to grow enough potatoes to last us through the winter. We ended up with 17 pounds of potatoes, which was not nearly enough to do that. A survival garden is not the time to experiment with new methods or to risk your food supply. If you are growing a survival garden, chances are you're gonna have a limited amount of time because you're gonna have a lot of other things going on and demanding your time. So it makes sense to plan in advance and design a garden that will be able to take care of itself for the most part. If you visit the Provident Prepper, how to create a survival food forest in your backyard, you will see how we have created this fantastic food forest where the chickens are a great part of it. Because we've designed it so well, it takes very little human input, and yet we get an abundance of fresh fruits from it, as well as fresh eggs, and it doesn't smell, and there's not a lot of work. Design is everything. Obviously, to grow a survival garden or any garden, you have to have water. Now, in an emergency situation, there is a chance that you will not have your culinary water supplies that you're used to, or maybe even your irrigation water supplies. You need to consider these things and figure out how you can harvest water to make sure your garden can grow. Or design systems to water without human intervention, such as designing a system of swales that carry that water without you having to do anything. In a crisis situation, it is likely that you are going to have limited resources. Space may be one of those. You may not be able to get seed, or you may not be able to get garden tools. Some of these things you have to have in advance. And that is one of the really important reasons why you need to grow a garden on a regular basis. Because if you grow a garden today, you will be ready when it really counts. One of the challenges that we have is a limited growing season. Depending on where you live, your growing season might be much longer than ours. We have a fairly short growing season and so we have to be really creative. One of the things that I like to do is to start my vegetables early with a practice known as winter sowing. It's very inexpensive. You take a milk carton or a soda jug and you cut it, you put the potting soil in it and you plant your seeds and then you just set it outside and those seeds will grow whenever it's right for them to grow. It sounds crazy and I didn't really believe it at first, but if you visit this post, Winter Sowing, Carefree Early Start for Veggies, you will see exactly what you need to do to accomplish this and it's a great way to start your vegetables early. Now let's talk about protection and the first area of protection is protection from trespassers. It's possible there will be a lot of hungry people and we highly encourage you to share whenever possible. However, we do need to protect what we are growing to meet the needs of our family. One of the ways that we have planned to protect our goods from trespassers is through a fence that surrounds our entire property. Will it stop everybody? Absolutely not. But it does create a barrier that indicates clearly this is not where you belong. Throughout our property, we have planted thorny bushes to add to that level of security. In this view, the bushes are still young. They're buffalo berry bushes which produce fruit, but they're very thorny. So, And they also fix nitrogen into the soil to feed these fruit trees that are right there. Eventually, they will grow all along this fence and have a nice hedge. That's another layer of protection. It's not really possible to completely prevent anybody from entering, but we can do things to minimize that risk. You may have people who come and steal some of your fresh produce, but things don't all ripen at the same time. Somebody comes in this week and cleans out everything that's ripe. Well, guess what? Next week you're gonna have different things coming on as long as you have planned this correctly. So they can't decimate your entire survival garden. It's important that you protect from insects because some insects can totally decimate your crop. By growing a survival garden now, you're able to identify what insects pose the greatest threat to your garden in your climate and take reasonable steps to combat those insects. 
protection from critters and birds. Strawberries are a great example that we have here. It takes nothing more than this nice little netting and you don't have a problem with the birds eating all of your strawberries. We have cats and they do a great job of protecting our crops from birds. Another thing you should consider is how to protect from the sun. If you live in an area like Arizona where the sun is so incredibly intense, we live in an area where wind is a huge issue. It's very easy for the wind to dry out your plants and to cause a lot of problems. This is my kitchen garden in early spring. That hedge that you see is a hedge of goji berries. It does a fantastic job of protecting against the wind. It's edible. Both the leaves and the berries are edible and it serves as a privacy barrier also protecting people from actually seeing what I'm growing in my garden from the street. Frost is another huge issue in our area. We get very early frosts and very late frosts. My father-in-law loves to grow sweet potatoes. These sweet potatoes have to be baby. These hot caps are covering his sweet potatoes. He puts down the black plastic to encourage the heat and he puts the hot caps on which are held down by the bricks. It takes a lot of work for him to grow these sweet potatoes and for me that's not a good survival crop. I need a crop that I can stick in the ground and I know no matter what happens, it's gonna produce food for my family. But frost protection is an important consideration. My survival garden has a foundation of perennial plants. Perennial plants come back year after year. They're things like fruit trees and berry bushes. Perennial plants have a much more mature root system than annual plants that you plant year after year. They're more drought tolerant, they have a higher production ability and they're very dependable. Fruit and nut trees are a fantastic resource for a survival garden, especially when you put a really nice thick layer of mulch down, then they require very little water in order to produce well. Grapes and berries are an important part of your survival garden. If you stage this right, you can have different kinds of berries coming on all the way from early spring through late fall. So they provide almost a continuous source of good nutrients for your family. One of the things you can do with grapes and berries is to just plant them with your regular landscape. They can be so beautiful. They don't have to be planted in rows or look like a production area. They can just add beauty to your landscape and in turn, nutrition when things get hard. Perennial vegetables can be a good asset in a survival garden because they come back year after year. There aren't very many of them, but Jerusalem artichokes are an example of a really good one. The plant is about five feet tall and the top of it dies back every year. It has beautiful sunflowers on it, but underneath the ground you have these tubers, which are delicious. You can eat them raw or you can eat them cooked. And even if you leave just one little piece of a tuber down there, your plant will grow back next year. It's a good option. There's a whole variety of perennial herbs too that will come back year after year. This happens to be Egyptian walking onions, which are delicious and first thing when spring comes around, those onions are up and ready to be used. Chives are another example of a perennial herb that can be a very valuable asset in a survival garden. Now there are certain plants that will readily reseed themselves, which means that while they're not perennial, they will cast their seeds. You let them go to seeds and they will spread their seeds everywhere. That can be a really bad thing unless it's a good plant. In this photo, you see red romaine lettuce, which is one of my favorites. I allow the lettuce to go to seed and spread its seed, which means that in early spring, as soon as it's warm enough, I have lettuce growing wherever it landed, but I do have lettuce growing before the lettuce that I plant ever has a chance to sprout. Onions will do that. Dill is an example of an herb that will readily recede, but a lot of your greens will do that. The last thing I'd like to talk about are plants that will come back in the spring. In the photo here in the center, you will see Swiss chard that was planted in the fall. We had our crop and then the hard frost came and it died back. Well, in the springtime, as long as you haven't tilled that in, it will just grow back and you can harvest those leaves until it goes to seed, which gives you a jump on that early spring season when you really need that food. As soon as this plant has gone to seed, that's about the time that the Swiss chard that you have planted in the spring will be up and ready to eat. Swiss chard does that, spinach does that, kale will do that. So think about that when you're deciding what plants you wanna include in your survival garden. We hope we've given you some really great ideas to think about. Now it's your turn to step into this and design your survival garden. 
Yours is going to be different than ours. You're going to design it around your conditions, your climate, and your family, and the things that you like. And the things that you have stored. Right. That makes a big difference. Right. So time to get busy and get this going. Here are some great resources we hope that you will take a look at. Best strategies for growing a reliable survival garden. Also long-term food storage, creative solutions to build a critical asset. And prepper risk assessment. What risks should you be prepared to survive? We hope you'll take a look at these and many more on our website, theprovidentprepper.org. You can do this. Growing fresh fruits and vegetables in your backyard can be a great asset for your family and can provide great stability for you in the future. And now for the question of the day. What things have you learned as you've grown food in your own backyard? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.